All right. So hello and welcome to the Team USA panel discussion um, for the 2020 virtual Boston Marathon. Um, I'm Erin Strout. I am a senior writer at Women's Running Magazine, and I'm joined here by our 2020, 2021, uh, <laughs> U.S. Olympic marathon team, um, and I feel like none of you really need an introduction, but, um, and we can go by first names because everybody knows who you are now, Alphine, Molly, and Sally. Um, <laughs> so thank you all for being here today. Um, I'm going to start out with a really simple question that has become probably more complicated in the past six months, but, um, I just want to hear how each of you are doing. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to start with Sally because she's joining us from Kenya. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how you're doing, why you're in Kenya, um, and what's going on with you, Sally. Oh, um, hi there. Um, well, I'm doing good. Um, obviously, not what you expected August to be like when the year began. So it's been um, obviously different from what obviously what the year was supposed to be in, but I'm doing well. I'm, uh, I'm training and, and healthy and my fam, spending time with my family. And um, so that is a good part of what is, you know, what's going on in the world right now. I am in Kenya. Um, I, after the trials, I traveled back to Kenya. Um, to recover. So the plan was to go to there for, for a month and spend time with my family and then come back to the US to get ready for the trials. Uh, for, the, for the Olympics, well, the world changed. And uh, now I'm here. I can travel until about two weeks ago, they started opening or um, loosening the, the lockdown and now you can travel. So I think I'll be traveling soon, but well, that's why I'm in Kenya. <laughs> Well, um, Molly, you've been sort of all over the place a little bit. So tell us uh, what's going on with you and uh, where you are right now. Yeah, so I, for the last couple months, I've been back and forth between Wisconsin, um, where I, I grew up, my parents' house, which is where I am um, right now, and Boston, where I live. Um, so I had been spending pretty much most of my time in Boston. It's actually been, obviously... Kind of like Sally said, this year has been so different from what we thought it was going to be. Um, but I have really gotten to enjoy being in Boston for the summer. I usually am racing and I'm around so much that I don't get to enjoy summers in Boston. And so it's been nice being able to train there. I've got um, now the things have started to open back up again, um, been able to like see friends and get to go out on the river. And we took a little trip up to Maine. So um, and then I, during the heaviest part of quarantine, because Boston was fully shut down, I actually spent that back here in Wisconsin for about a month with my parents and my sister. Um, but no, it's been good. Just kind of like, I don't know, you just deal with it. Life has been pretty different in Boston, obviously, with the full-time mask order. Um, running with a mask has been an adventure, to say the least. But, um, but yeah, it's kind of, it's good. Like, just making it work regardless. I think everybody's kind of going through it right now. So just trying to stay, stay positive given the conditions. So Alephine, I know you've been spending some time in New Mexico. Um, yeah, um, so I've spent more time in New Mexico, uh, more time since, you know, like I moved to Flagstaff a couple of years ago. So that's been great. Um, you know, Kim lives in New Mexico, my partner lives in New Mexico. And so it's been nice to spend more time here. Um, I've been used to, I've tried to get used to running by myself, uh, and I've been crocheting a lot, as you can see, stuff behind me. I've been buying a lot of yarn a lot. Actually, I kind of slowed down a little bit. <laughs> um, I've been uh, taking care of my garden, and I am doing remodeling of my house. So the other day, um, I was taking down linoleum floors, and I had, so, okay, I haven't been doing, I haven't been doing weights. So I took this day, and I took down in London from the uh, from the floors, and the next day I was so sore that I had to take a day off. Like literally, like I had to take a day off running because like my shoulders, my upper body was so sore. Um, so that has been uh, interesting. I haven't done any of that since then, but um, it's been nice, you know. I think like you know they both mentioned that uh, 2020 hasn't exactly been. Um, you know, the way we thought it was going to be. We were supposed to have just come back from the Olympics, but um, 
I think for me, it's been fun because I have, for the first time uh, in like 10 plus years, I haven't had to like do a lot of hard workouts. I mean, my mileage is still about 70 to 80. I do about um, one workout a week. I don't really worry too much about my sleep. Um, as long as I can get out and go run, that's great. Uh, I went to Flagstaff for like about um, three weeks um, a month ago, and then I came back. So that was really nice. I for the first time I was like, wow, I'm still a pro athlete, you know, because doing workouts with a group felt so much easier than when I'm here. Um, but other than that, it's been fun, you know, just chilling and trying to like take 2020 as it is. Like if I can run six days in a row, I am always very happy. It's good to hear. So um, before we kind of get into the current state of affairs, um, I do kind of want to back up to February 29th when life seems pretty awesome uh, for a lot of us <laughs> um, pre-pandemic. So tell me a little bit about what each of you sort of remembers most vividly from that day. And like, maybe tell me a little bit about how, you know, do you still feel a high from that day? Like, what do you remember? And sort of what are your feelings about it now that we were a, a little bit removed from it? Well, uh, that feels like, 10 years ago or more than that. <laughs> February 29, that was, I don't know, like, I would say one of the best days of my life. Um, you know, at that time, I was just, you know, out there racing and, you know, hoping that I could make the team because, you know, everything had gone well. And I think that morning, for example, for instance, for me was very, I was very upset that morning when I got up because I got up and I felt like I had a lot of uh, nickel and pains um, in multiple parts of my body. And so I didn't wake up feeling excited like I usually would, uh, you know, during a big race. And I was even more upset knowing that that was the biggest stage of my, uh, my career so far. And so I think that kind of um, helped me because I wasn't stressing too much about what the race was going to turn out. I was more stressed about how I was feeling. And uh, once the gun went off, um, you know, I think I kind of forgot for the most part, I forgot what, what was happening in, in my body. And I remember thinking though that, you know, because of the weather, I remember being super excited that first of all, it wasn't hot because like I was saying earlier, Molly, I don't want to run a hard marathon unless I absolutely have to do it, which I will do next summer. Um, but I remember being super excited that it was cooler and the fact that it was windy, I thought, well, then maybe we will have a big group for a very long time, which is exactly what happened. Um, but really during the race, I think I just remember like the second part of that was being so hilly, but then like feeling like, oh, I can do this, you know? Um, and then, of course, in that last loop, Sally, I will have to say this, I'm sorry, but I remember when right before the move happened, I remember looking ahead and seeing Molly and then looking behind and seeing you. And then no one else behind her was like, oh, my God, this is it. Like, this is happening. And I should have said, come on, Sally. But I was like, no, I'm just going to go with Molly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds really mean to say that right now. <laughs> but like... <laughs> that when that move happened I don't even remember like I don't know if any of you remember remembers how the move happened but I don't uh, but I just remember thinking like oh my god this is actually happening like I can't believe this and now that you know five five and a half months have gone by I keep thinking about it and I'm like I can't believe that happened like that was the biggest day of our lives and for the three of us, you know, we are very fortunate that we already have our spots to go to the Olympics. Um, because, you know, thinking about what's going on right now, it's very, it's been very networking. And even for me, you know, like having already met the team, like some days you just don't feel like, you know, going out to a run, for a run. And I can only imagine how much harder that is for someone else who is still not only trying to qualify for the Olympics, but also trying to qualify, you know, for the trials. And so I feel very fortunate in that uh, respect, you know, that I have a lot of time to train and I only need to get ready and be ready, you know, on like uh, August 8th of 2021. That is the day that I need to be ready. But from now until then, you know, I can just relax and, you know, I and take a breather. A lot of people don't have that opportunity. But yeah, like I keep thinking about it and I'm like, 
it's just incredible like and to see how much of my life has changed since then you know in terms of how people see you or in terms of the letters that you get from people and i think this kind of um like for sally and i would reason in more like i didn't realize at the time you know that sally and i were going to be the first you know african-american women representing um you know america in the olympic trials uh for the marathon you know like the first black women representing america um on the on the marathon and so we've got i've gotten a lot of you know like letters people saying that i inspired them and i don't think i realized the weight of that at the time until you know let alone especially when um you know things happen with george floyd and all that stuff and i've taken that time to really be grateful for the opportunities that i've gotten and also realize that there's so many black boys and girls looking at us and thinking that could be me someday and i don't know i just feel so grateful that we get to be those people um yeah i guess i'll i'll go next it is it is kind of crazy thinking back to that day and just like i guess because like my entire world as a pro athlete just changed like shifted um that entire day going into that race like i I was almost like there was so many things for me to be nervous about before that race. Um, Not only the sense that it was just so competitive with pretty much every pro woman that I knew and really respected was going to be on the line that day. Um, And then just the fact that it was the first time I ever raced the marathon. So going into it, I'd almost just kind of like resigned myself to the fact of like, I was so nervous, but I was like, you know what, it's just going to be what it's going to be like, you have no idea what to expect. It's going to be really hard. Just go in and try and like do the best you can. And so I remember like the morning of, I was so nervous, but also just like weirdly, like really excited and so happy because all of my family was there. So many of my friends from Boston were either down there watching or down there racing. Um, even like going to the line, they were like blasting music and I was literally dancing with two of my friends. We were all back in wave three. And so we were like, as they were announcing like the front line of people, we were like, just dancing. It was crazy then because the gun went off and I was able to get up to the front and like, I just felt like I, I felt like I like was like supposed to be be up there even though like arguably I had no no place putting my nose up there in it and then kind of like what Alphine was saying with that move um I don't even know if it was mile 19 or whatnot but on my part it wasn't any conscious move we were just going up a little hill and I just kept like I don't know I was feeling so good and so strong and the entire pack slowed a little bit with the hill and I just kind of kept going my same pace because I was like I don't know. I just kind of want to like, this feels good. I don't want to have to slow down. And then realizing everybody fell back. And I was like, I don't know. I was only a couple meters ahead, but realizing like, oh no, like what have you just done? And truthfully, it was the fact that Alphine immediate, it was within like 10 meters or so. All of a sudden I had Alphine right next to me. And it was that having Alphine there of being like, okay, this is what you're supposed to do. Like Alphine's going with you. This is someone, you know, this is someone like you've run with before. And like, she's going to like, she's going to help you with this. And so it was kind of that sense of like, okay, now it's just the two of us. And if we can keep ahead and keep this going, like we're both going to make the team. So we might as well just like go for it right now. But I definitely wouldn't have had the confidence to do, to like, keep that move going if Alphine hadn't been there because I definitely had that thought in my mind of like should you play it safe and like fade back to the rest of the group and like like you have no idea what you're doing right now you literally have never run more than 24 miles so like (laughs) yeah maybe play it safe but I don't know it was it was just such a cool day like I I don't think I could have like imagined it better in my mind beforehand I think I'd mentally prepared for it to I'd mentally prepared for the worst case scenario and then it was better than I ever could have dreamed it was. And just like, obviously like such an honor, like getting to be on the team with like both Alphine and Sally, who I look up to enormously, like hell, I, I, I had a workout where I like worked Sally's bottles for her when I was still in college and I was like fangirling the whole time. And now I'm like, Oh my God, I'm on the same Olympic team as her. This is like the greatest moment of my life. So it's been, it's been really cool, really fun getting to like appreciate just how huge this is. 
Oh, Sadly, do you remember uh, Molly handing you bottles during a workout when she was? <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, I remember that. I remember that. I'm not that old, but you know, I remember that. <laughs> what an honor, though. What an honor to be able to um, to have someone like Molly and Alfin to be part of Team USA. It's just a great honor, especially when you see people that have developed and and really grown and matured and done amazing things. That's that's a privilege, and that's. That's just wonderful, and I am really lucky to be part of that team. Um, February 29th. Oh, that day. It wasn't that a special day. Um, what do I think about? What do I even remember about that day? Um, so much pain and so much joy. That is pretty much what I think when I think of 20, to February 29th, because I remember um, the... It was, it was, I, I, I kind of, going into that race, I kind of had, had an idea that it was going to be a tough day, a tough, a tough competition, just based on who was there. It was everybody you, everybody was there, basically. And so there was no way around it. You know, it was going to be painful at some point. So, and it's a marathon, it's going to happen anyway. Uh, so I, I kind of knew that going in, um, but, but I think I also underestimated <laughs> how difficult the course was going to be. And so the last bit of that race, um, when, when the girls are talking about um, the move, I, I, it, it wasn't, I, it, it didn't catch, it, I, didn't, I wasn't caught on off guard uh, with that move. But I think the sudden, it was so sudden and so sharp, I felt like that um, it kind of threw me off just a bit one second off and I realized, okay, um, this move is really quick. And I feel like if I go with these girls, uh, I might not make it to the finish line. So I kind of made a judgment call to hold back and, and, and kind of go with my pace. And so I let them go and, and I felt like um, that was a really good move on my, on my part. And um, those last miles, oh my God, oh my God, that, that was painful. I, I don't know how everyone else felt, but I just, I remember those last miles being so brutal. I cannot believe, I can't believe we were running six minute miles. It felt like I was running 12 minutes a mile. It just, it was, it, was, it just felt like my legs were not moving anymore. And, and I just kept thinking, oh, they're going to catch me. And then it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but um and then just that pain and that perseverance and that just commitment and I remember thinking just one foot in front of another Sally just one put just put one foot in front of the other and I would use markers on the road and thinking the girls Alfine and Molly already gone so all you need to do is keep your composure put one foot in front of the other look at that corner just count this you know count 10 steps and get there. That's all I did. That's what I did for the last three months. I was basically counting steps. And there were so many people on the course that were shouting and they were telling me how far back that the chess group was. Everybody was shouting the seconds, eight seconds, 12 seconds, 15 seconds. It was amazing. It's just amazing what people can come through for you. I don't even know who they were. They were just fans on the road. And I mean, every like 50, every 100 meters, someone was telling me, 10 seconds, eight seconds. It was just, I don't know who they are and I'm so forever grateful for that. And so um, I just remember getting to the finish line and just, it was painful to get to that finish line. I think I was dizzy. I felt like I was gonna die or something. And, and this is feeling that way considering I, I felt that I was in a really good shape coming into the race. And so that was surprising because I felt that I was in a really good shape going into the race. And um, so it was so painful at the end of it. And then there was just relief, enormous relief and joy, just pure joy of realizing what you were able to do and what you were able to accomplish and going through that difficult time when you feel like, oh, I should just sit down and call it, you know. I've been to an Olympics, I have a medal, I could just sit down right now and be done. And, and, and those things cross your mind, but that fight to keep going. And I think I, I was really proud of that. I was able to hold it together and be part of this team and, and to just see how Alfin and, and Molly, oh, they just ran a brave, brave race. And they were, oh, you couldn't even believe it that, you know, this is, 
this is their first Olympics. It's, it's amazing. They did a wonderful, a wonderful job, and they ran really well. So I am privileged to be to be part of the team with them, and uh, I will forever remember. You know, I will forever remember um, February twenty nine because it's 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 my first U.S. team, um, and to be able to do that is is a blessing. And um, yeah, every time I think of that day, I'm emotional because it carries so much weight. It carries so much weight, um, the journey. And people say, oh, the, you know, but, but there's a lot that goes behind the scene. You know, we, we, we can be stars for like a day, but there's a lot that goes behind the scene. There's a lot of people that, I, I thought about people that have helped take care of my daughter when I was training. I would go for, I'd go for my morning runs at, at four in the morning because you could get hot sometimes. And so, and, and I would have people, you know, my husband and I would go for, for my morning runs during those 4, 4 a.m. morning runs, you know, long runs for, for 25 miles. And I would have this lady that, watch, that helps me in, in my house and, and, and she would come in and, and watch Emma at four in the morning. That is a lot of people that really sacrifice. So you, you go out there and you, you know, and I go out there and try to really try to give my best and, and hope that I am rewarding them in, in a way that when I come through, they, they also celebrate. Yeah. I love all of your stories so much. Um, I wish we had more time to delve into each one of them, but um, Molly, I want to come back to you for a second. Um, obviously, you were the big surprise that day. When we talked about contenders, I think Sally and Alephine were on everyone's list. Um, but you were, there you were. Um, and I want to hear, I mean, was it a surprise to you? And at what point, you know, in that race where you, you kind of touched on this already, but tell us a little bit more about like, you were in uncharted territory and you just decided to you know, take a risk and, and sort of what went through your head at that point. Yeah. Um, even just going into the race with like, I feel like when I would tell people beforehand, like, oh yeah, like I'm, I'm going to like do my first marathon at the trials. People either thought it was super cool and like fun, or they thought I was the biggest idiot in the world. Um, because it's just like, especially like diving feet first into just that level of competition was already like so much. And I think, um, yeah, I, it was, I would, couldn't have even imagined this going in. Um, my training had been kind of all over the place. Like I'd been training well up in Flagstaff, but like compared to what I was seeing some other women do, I just, I constantly kept comparing just the level of work that I was able to do compared to other women. And just, I mean, I'd only been running for consistently for five months. Um, uh, I'd been injured. I'd been coming off surgery. My first two years as a pro had been really, really shaky and just kind of dealing with a lot of the, a lot of the repercussions of not treating my body super well during my college career. Um, so frankly, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to handle the marathon and it was kind of just a leap of faith with it. But I knew that my body really liked the longer distance races and Houston seemed to go well with the half. And so I figured, you know what, what the hell, like I might blow up trying to do it, but at least I'll, I'll do it trying to do something I loved. But um, yeah, once I got into it, it was just like the race felt so different from anything I've ever raced before. It feels very different from like a road 10 K or a track 10 K. And I just like felt like my body kind of knew what to do. Um, I also really just like Hills, like I wouldn't say I had like the greatest training block going in, but like my body thrives really well off of hills. I'd been training a lot knowing those were coming in and yeah, kind of just took it one mile at a time. I really wasn't trying to pay too much attention to the pace we were running and almost more just going into it with the mentality of like, stay with the lead pack as long as you can and see what happens. But yeah, I'm not going to lie. Those last six miles were the hardest thing I've ever done. And <laughs> like, Alphine was literally encouraging me as we were going, like, come on, you can do it. Stay with me because I would fall off a little bit and she'd be like, stay with me, stay with me. And I, I truthfully don't think I could have made it without that because it was just like having that encouragement there and feeling so much pain, kind of like what Sally said, so much pain. It was so hilly and just kept thinking like, there's no way I can keep going like this. And Alphine just being like, no, you can like, come on, keep with me, keep with me that's, that's truthfully what got me through. And yeah, it's been 
it's just been more than I ever could have imagined. Like I, if you had told me the night before the race that I'd have made the team that day, I think I probably would have laughed at you. I was, I was aiming for top 20, even like fifth place would have been like, would have been the thing. Like the way I was going, I probably wouldn't have like been re-upped for a pro contract anymore. I really didn't have that big of a chance of making the 10 K team. This is just like, this is, a year ago, I wasn't going to be a pro runner anymore. I was injured again and I was going to quit the sport. And like, I, it's just so funny thinking how much can change in a year and just what happens when you get in the right training situation. So yeah, kind of like what Sally said too. It's just, there's so many people around me that supported me when things were really tough or when I was on crutches last summer. And so it's like, yeah, it's really fun getting to share that, that with them all now. Alphine, I want to, so, you know, you're, you all are among the only pro runners who have gotten to race this year or pro marathoners. Um, so tell me, you know, when you look back on that race, um, can you tell me, you know, what your plan was going in and did it go according to that plan? Um, did you execute it or did it change uh, while you were racing? Yeah, um, I mean, my plan going into the race was uh, to tuck in as much as possible. And um, watching videos, I realized that I actually didn't do that. I realized that I was close to the front most of the time. Um, but I thought, in my mind, I thought that because of how hot the coast was, because I, um, I visited the coast back in November, and I remember just thinking that the last six months are going to be really hot. And so in my mind, I thought, well, even if we don't run super fast, you know, the course is going to dwindle down people. And as long as I don't get myself in front and try to show off and, you know, which means I'll be suffering, I thought that by mile 20, there would be like five people. And I thought I'm definitely going to be one of those five people. And by mile 23, there will be three people and I'm going to be one of those three people. And then I'm just going to have to make sure that I stay in that top three. And so... There was never a scenario where like I was leading the race at like mile 20 or 21 in. Um, but I mean, like, I think that's just, again, like I didn't know until that point when, um, you know, the move happened. I didn't know that that was when the move was going to happen. I mean, I was anticipating it and I was very aware and I wanted to make sure that I concentrated and I would go back a little bit. So in the past, you know, like I've had races where um, they will go really well. And most of my races that went really well are either races that were like mixed gender races. Like if I won the race and ran really fast, it's because I found a couple of guys and tucked in behind them and they just took me through the race. Or it was a race where I was a clear fair fight and I just like took off from the gun and nobody caught up with me. But with this race, I was like, okay, I can't do any of that. I mean, the only thing that I have to do is to tuck in behind those women. And I knew just how strong they were. And really, like, on paper, you know, my PR wasn't really that great. And um, I just knew that in order to make it to those 20 miles and be only among the five people, I will have to really concentrate. And also in the past, the races that I've lost, like, I get to a point where, like, I completely, like, disengage. And like I black out and I don't know what's happening. And that's basically like, for example, in Houston in January, um, I was having a really good race running with Molly uh, Hado. And I got to a point where for some reason I just blacked out. And in that moment, I just got passed. And I feel like I was just existing and just going through like, I can't even believe it, like I still get to this uh, finish line with that kind of mindset. And so going into this race, I promised myself and I even took the psychologist, I was like, I want to concentrate from the start until the finish. And so like, I was like, in it, like I was looking at everything that was happening and just being in the moment. And that was like, I think that was part of the reason why I noticed that, you know, the path wasn't there anymore. And I took that, uh, I took advantage of that. And really once we made the move, once I went over um, to Molly's uh, shoulder, this is gonna sound bad, but it felt really comfortable. And of course, again, like for the two of you ladies, like, or even you, Aaron, like when you're having a good day, things feel really good. I mean, you know, Molly's talking about how painful that was to me. It felt super comfortable until mile 25. Now that last hill, that long hill at mile 25 was super painful, but also part of the reason was because I was trying to run away from Molly. 
otherwise if we were like trying to run together and finish together i think it would have been comfortable but i think at any point you know in a race when you're trying to run away from someone or trying to maintain like i can't imagine what charlie was going through i've been in races where you are so afraid that you're going to get caught like your legs are like giving up on you and you're so afraid the stakes are so high and you're afraid that somebody's coming from behind i never want to be in that situation but we all get to be there you know at some point in our uh you know lives and so for me like it was just i think i had a plan i was ready training wise but then i also took advantage of the opportunities that presented itself and it definitely ended up being a really good day and again i mean i think i kind of believe in in faith too like when things are supposed to happen they will happen you know like if that was if that rate had been the next day i don't know how any of us would have done it you know if it had been a day where it wasn't windy. I don't know how the results would have worked. And so I think there's just, there's just a day for all of us, you know, like there's a day for you, there's a day for another person and you just don't know. You just have to go in and have faith in what you've done and believe in yourself, but also have faith that what is supposed to happen will happen. I'm going to use that philosophy in the future. <laughs> use your That's faith and that, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to kind of go into current day now. Um, so Sally, tell me a little bit about when, you know, to you it became clear that the Olympics were probably going to be post postponed and sort of how you kind of coped with that news as, when it became official. Um, I think I didn't think that the Olympics was going to be canceled until it was postponed, actually not canceled, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think it never really crossed my mind and, and um, until it was announced that it is going to be postponed. And I was, I was relieved. I was relieved because there was a lot of anxiety that was surrounding the whole Olympics at that time because th there was a pandemic. Um, you didn't know what was going to happen. Um, you didn't know if you, we were going to be able to run the Olympics, were we able to be able to travel, are you able to train? Um, I mean, what is the situation? You, you wouldn't really, it, it, there was a lot of uncertainty. And if for an athlete, and I am a classic type A personality, I plan for everything, and I mean everything. <laughs> most things in my life and so um so that is such a difficult thing for me to not know what is going to happen and so um that uncertainty was not easy for me and when it was announced that it is postponed I was relieved because now I understood that okay there is no Olympics in the summer I can come down I can regroup I can take some time off and refocus and then I can put my head down you know towards the end of this year and into the, the beginning of next year and really get something going so that was good and it also um it it was um i think it was a really good decision because you were talking about one of the greatest sporting events in in, in, the, in the world for that for that year and athletes you know spend four years or even more preparing for this particular race and what how would it feel to go to the olympics and not be able to perform to your best performance because of the circumstances that are surrounding you know this pandemic so i think it was a great decision i i was i i support it. i think it was fantastic i i like that that the fact that they postponed it and i liked it even more because um because it was postponed and not completely cancelled because that would have been a possibility. They could have completely canceled. So I think for, for them to decide to push it a year, uh, uh, one year forward and to allow the athletes that have really worked to, to be there and the fans to be able to celebrate that, I think that was fantastic. So I was happy about that. Um, it has been difficult. Like Alvin said, the motivation. Oh my God. It, you just, I didn't realize how difficult it is to not have something to train for until I couldn't train for something specifically. <laughs> so it was just sometimes, there are days that I just feel like, oh, I, I don't want to get up. I don't want to go for a run. And I just feel like, oh, I just want to sit down <laughs> and I don't know, watch a movie on Netflix or whatnot. And, and so there have been lazy days that I've just felt like, ah, I'm not getting out. And so it's been difficult to, to get motivated. But, but I think um, like, the, 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 you know, Alvin has mentioned that it is easier for us because we are already in the team. So I, I know that, for example, when, when it was August 7th, I, I went for and I'm like, okay, 
365 days, 365 days, Sally, you got to get yourself together. And so, <laughs> and, and so uh, that, is, that, that is such an advantage, knowing that you have a race, hopefully everything goes well and you're able to, to get to the starting line next year in August. And so I think that is enough motivation to, to get me going, you know, through the year. And I could just only imagine someone that, you know, um, someone that doesn't have that guarantee, someone that is not sure where they're going to be next year and, 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 and just all the uncertainty. So I am definitely the lucky ones and I, and I, you know, and I'm grateful for that because I do realize that I need to put my head down sometime and, and get things done. And it is, on an advantage point of view because I, I, I have that sport reserved already for me. So, um, so it has been, there's ups a little bit, but I think there's more, you know, there's been downs and ups, but I think the ups have definitely been more. I'm, I have, I'm grateful for so many things. This, this time I get, I get to spend time with my family and, and, and healthy, you know, have family members and spend time. And I know the world has been difficult. This year has been difficult for, for a lot of people. So I, I, I got to participate. We, we, we got to, to run a race. I have so many friends that were getting ready for a spring marathon and they didn't get to race from, you know, they have a lot of people that never raced before from last year. And so for us, we got lucky. We got to run a championship and, you know, and we, we got to, to make the team. So that is a huge blessing. That is such a great thing to be grateful for. So as long as much as the, the world is turned upside down, basically, not what we expect it to be, I think I am grateful uh, for a lot of things in my life. So when that time comes, well, well I'll be ready. And you're lucky, Sally, that you're in Kenya. I mean, I, I'm kind of jealous of you. I wish that this pandemic, um, you know, found me when I was in Kenya because I literally, like him and I actually planned an impromptu trip to get to Kenya in April. Um, and then like, so when we came back from the trials, uh, of course we were asked to do, uh, to like come to Boston Marathon as ambassadors. So then I was like, okay, we can go to Kenya right after Boston. We can just take our luggage to Boston and then fly to New York and get that one way flight. And um, of course, you know, like a week or two later, everything was completely canceled. And now I'm like, I'm never going to see my family for probably another year. So I don't know. I think you made a really good choice of going back home. I mean, you didn't know that, but it was a smart choice for sure. Like, I, I, mean, it's I, nice think, I think I think we definitely. got lucky. Yeah, I, I, I think I think we got lucky because I, I have a well, she just turned three years old. So at the time I had a two year old and you can imagine a two-year-old in a confined space and all. so it was it's been really good for Emma to be in Kenya because we, we live in a farm by the way <laughs> so so we live in a farm and there's a lot of space the weather is warm and nice so she can roam and run all over the place and you know so it's been really good for her and I know that she's she's enjoying that so as mm -hmm. much as you know and I have and I have a farm and you know I get to I get to, to do all the fun things that you do. I have a garden and all that good stuff. I have some chickens and some cows and all the good things. So, um, so I'm, I'm occupied in that, in that way. So, um, so it's, it's not bad. <laughs> now you're living your best life too. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, it's funny because your, your quarantine situation is probably the exact opposite of mine. Like my apartment in Boston, we have, no backyard, no balcony, whatnot. And like, oh. especially right at the beginning, um, cause things got real, I got maybe like a week and a half after the trials of like being able to enjoy it before all of Boston started to shut down. And it was a question for a while of whether we, like we got the stay at home order, but it was a question of like, are we going to get in trouble if we leave our apartments? Are we going to have to just stay in our apartments for the, the however long this goes on? And it was oh, terrifying. Wow. Like, all the stores were like sold out of groceries. Everyone was like, I saw a guy walking down the street in like a full hazmat suit. It was just such a weird <laughs> time thinking back to that about like all the different phases of this quarantine. And like, luckily then once we were finally able to like go out and see people, like you see your friends for the first time and you can't like give them a hug, but you're just like, ah, people like it's, it was so <laughs> nice. But yeah, that's, that sounds so ideal. Cause we were just like in our little apartment of like, is this just going to be our life? Do, will I have to run like around my apartment up and down? Like, are, 
700 foot apartment, me and my sister. But yeah, yeah, that sounds ideal out there. Well, I'm glad you can get out. <laughs> I'm, get I'm, I'm glad That's too. It, the running with the mask kind of sucks, but at least I can go outside. <laughs> I mean, I have not actually run in a mask. I'm lucky that New Mexico, um, you know, like Santa Fe is very... I mean, people are outside, but it's also a very small town, and you can just go for a run. There's not a lot of people on the trail, but I mean, people still wear masks, but I just have found it really, really hard to wear a mask. So when I'm running on the trail, I just make sure to be on the other side of the trail and yell from behind, you know, like, coming, you know. But like, it's been, I've been lucky that way because it's not that populated. But yeah, how has mm -hmm. it been like running in a mask? It's, it's difficult. You kind of get... I, I hate to even say it, but like, so my run today here in Wisconsin was my first like fully maskless run in a while. And it almost feels kind of weird, like not wearing one. I felt kind of naked, like leaving the house and not having something around my neck. Um, but it, yeah, I would have to say it's obviously not a comfortable, it's very hot and sweaty, especially with it being so hot and humid in Boston. Like, I have a variety of different masks that I'll wear. So I've got the neck gaiters, I've got the wraparounds. Sometimes if I'm feeling really lazy, I'll just straight up wear like an N95 mask on a run, which is horrible to run in, but I'm just like, it's fine. It's a, it's a five mile run, it's fine. Um, but yeah, you a lot of times if I'm in an area without a ton of people, I'll do the up down. So like wear it around my neck and then pull it up if I'm near people. But Boston is just, there's so many people out running regularly that like you pretty much have to have it up anytime you're going for a run along the river. So I did, I want to say the longest run that I've done fully masked the entire time is probably like 13 or 14 miles. And that was, it's not yeah. super fun. I'm like my face, I'm breaking out super bad because I just have to constantly wear <laughs> something down there. But yeah, you just kind of get used to it after a while. And if you don't wear it, you will get yelled at and screamed at. Okay. We had a lady that flipped out on us this weekend because mm -hmm. we did, we were running in a, a group of a couple people and we had pulled the masks down and she was like 20 feet away and just started screaming at us. We're like, ma'am, we're not even near you. <laughs> you can have a tag saying Olympian. Yeah. <laughs> They'd probably get even madder. I try to like hide, like, no, you don't know. I know. Me. I know because you don't want to be that person who is seen on camera and the whole world sees that that was Molly's idea not following the rules. Well, that's it. I have one. I, anytime I post on Instagram of like me running in a mask or something, people always find a way to criticize how I'm wearing it. Either I'm not wearing it high enough, it's not over my nose. Then some people will criticize me for wearing the mask and saying that I'm going to suffocate. It's like, I can't win. I give up. I'm just going to wear it and hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah. Just wait. Yeah, it's tough times for sure. Um, so I wanted to get kind of get into, um, and Molly, by the way, I think once you get to 7,000 feet after um, wearing a mask and all that humidity over the past <laughs> past few months I think 7,000 feet is going to be no problem for you. I'm so much looking forward to the not hum like the no humidity just my hair itself like is my hair turns into an afro and the humidity like, that's, <laughs> that's all I want dry so Molly maybe if you or Alfie why don't you um tell us a little bit about how you know amid all of this uncertainty and and since you know the Olympics have been postponed how have you kind of readjusted um your training and also kind of your attitude toward you know what's going on yeah um I think for me it's uh when they announced that the Olympics was going to be uh, postponed I was heartbroken. I was really heartbroken. I think um, for about a month or a month and a half, and a month and a half, I had this lump in my throat. Well, like every time I think about it, I want to cry and I can get that lump off my chest. And the only thing that I will have to do is go out for a run, then I can completely forget about it. That's why I think I really struggled with that. And um, part of the reason for me was, um, and I mentioned this to you, Erin, uh, um, that you know, I had, I mean, I'm not a planner like Sally, but I had a perfect plan of how 2020 was going to go for me. I was like, okay, I'm just going to go to the Olympics once I make the team, come back, you know, like um, 
get ready to like have a family and go run New York City Marathon, probably a month pregnant like Sally was. You know, I had all this perfect plan. And so, and then like when that changed, I was like, now I have a year and a half. And that to me felt like eternity. And also thinking about that, I was like, okay, if I wait until I come back from the Olympics, and then that means that I'm not, I might not even be able to come back. Like, say I have a child in 2022, and then if I have a lot of, like difficulty, like Sally, I might not even be able to run in 2024. So it basically is like my career might just end this year. And so I had a really difficult time. Um, but also one of the things that kind of um, helped me was though that, okay, so I was like, okay, the Olympics has been postponed, but it's definitely going to be races in the fall. And so I came back from the trials and I actually had my contract for New York City Marathon, literally that next week, which is the earliest I've ever had a contract for a race. Um, and so I was super excited about that. I was like, okay, I mean, that was my sixth marathon, but I was like, okay, if I can run New York City Marathon, I even floated the idea with my manager of running New York City Marathon, you know, just to learn how to continue to compete. And then maybe go to Tokyo next year, you know, in, Feb uh, in February or March, uh, whenever Tokyo Marathon happens, and run a really fast time or see how fast I can run. Or maybe go to Boston, you know, so I was like, okay, by the time next summer comes around, I will have already had two marathons under my belt. So that was my uh, silver lining in that short time frame. But then, of course, none of that happened again, you know, everything again changed. And so I think eventually I just like, Stop expecting, you know, like I think in mid April, literally, like it was like, okay, I knew that things were probably not going to happen for the rest of this year. And I had to like really change my life completely in ways that I can't really say right now. But like it's been fun just not having a lot of pressure. It's been fun um, just training. And, um, you know, like my teammates, for instance, they have races, you know, they have like virtual races and all that. I have no desire of doing that. I think for me, I'm just like, I'm kind of thinking that if I took this year a little bit easier, then, you know, like it would be a very big recovery year for me so that at the tail end of my career, I'll have a year or a year and a half left. Whether that's true or not, it's a different story. Um, and so I'm just taking this year, like, you know, like I know in the last 10 years, I haven't really had that much of a break, but like being able to run 70, 80 miles and not having a lot of intensity, I think for me is, is a good thing. Now, I've done 20 mile long runs literally like since the end of March until now. Like, that is the longest 20 mile streak I've ever had. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm still doing this and I'm still enjoying it. Um, but yeah, like, I'm just, I'm just honestly like right now, I don't even think about running as much as I should. And I think being in New Mexico is also good for me because I'm not constantly with people who are like setting goals of this is what they want to run. I'm just, like literally existing and like crocheting and thinking about what I'm going to do for my garden. And it's just that there's more to life than running. And I'm beginning to also realize that at some point, you know, my career is going to come to an end. I think I'm trying to train myself uh, now to see how am I going to adjust to that time? Because I know that it's hard. It's hard to give up this thing that you've been working for for your whole life. And like Sally said, it's really hard to train when you don't have a goal, you know, like when you don't have a race. But I think I just got to a point where I was like, I'm not going to pressure myself. Like there have been times where like I have a long run on Saturday and I wake up on Saturday and I'm like, I don't feel like doing a long run today. So I will just completely skip long run that day, stay until evening, do an easy run, do a long run on Sunday or even a Monday long run. And so like I am so unstructured and I feel like that freedom is really good for me right now. Now, when next year comes around, I'm definitely going to get back to seriousness. But right now, I'm having the best time of my life, you know, as much as I can during this pandemic, honestly. And I'm also beginning to be like, I want to see how other people, you know, feel like when they're just training for no particular reason, just to stay in shape. So I think I'm, I'm kind of like an everyday person. And I try to also post about how I feel because... It's like, you know, people like to know that we are normal people. And I'm like, can't believe a lot of people are like, even close to that. And I'm like, yeah, what did you think we were? Did you think we ran on oil or something? I'm a human being. You know, I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to do anything today. Just like you. <laughs> but that's been fun, you know, like just, I don't know, sharing the journey and, you know, like 
listening to people get so surprised and I'm like, yeah, honey, that's I, who I am. I, I just happen to like, you know, be talented enough to be a pro athlete, but otherwise I'm just like you. I think we all, you know, speaking for the recreational runners, I always love when, when you all are totally honest with what, how you're feeling on your social media posts. I think we all get a lot out of those. So thank you for that. Um, Molly, how, how are you proceeding? I know you're going up to altitude. Are you, um, you know, eyeing any of these like pop-up races or virtual things or, you know, what's, what's your plan? Yeah. So, um, I guess my, my quarantine, since the trials, it's been, it's been kind of crazy because I also had a plan for how I thought 2020 was going to go. And that just blew wide open on February 29th. Um, my whole year changed on that day. So I was already de- like pretty much having like my year was going to kind of be in flux. I was like, oh, like, wow, I guess I'm now going to Tokyo in midsummer. And then two weeks later, all of a sudden I'm not going to Tokyo. Um, but in terms of like motivation, I'm, I'm kind of weird in the sense that I I'm not super motivated, motivated by races. Like obviously like when I have to prep for a big race, that is like, I'll like gear up for that or whatnot. But I actually really just love like running for the sake of running a lot of times. Like I, I don't necessarily, like I just legitimately love getting to go out and just run and do that. And I think part of that is because so much of the last four years for me has been super broken up. I haven't been able to get in consistent training. Um, and I, I have had to deal with a lot of this stuff of like when I'm out for six months and I can't do it. And I just love like getting to go out every single day. And even if I'm not working out, even if I don't have a race to build up for, like that's just a very like peaceful thing for me. And especially with all the stress of quarantine, like I just found myself like doing a lot of mileage and just running a lot because it was the only social interaction that I could have of like masked runs with friends occasionally And just like a way of dealing with the stress and just like being able to go out and move my body because otherwise I was stuck in my apartment all day. Um, And just like really, I actually almost kind of liked it of like being able to just like focus on why I love running of like getting to go out and not have a a race that I have to gear up for right away. Um, uh, Also, I had actually like partially torn my plantar fascia in the race in Atlanta. So like being able to give myself some time to let that heal was actually um, like actually pretty beneficial to me. Obviously it was like absolutely heartbreaking to like have the Olympics postponed. Um, But at the same time, because in my mind, like that was such a sudden shock for me to make the team. I almost hadn't like been able to fully attach to that of like, oh yeah, like I've got this right now. And because I'm on the younger side, for a marathon or like, I mean, I was 25 when it happened. So whereas I think a lot of people tour like who have been like into their careers or whatnot, um, they have the experience and they're like, Oh, do I have to wait a whole nother year for me? Being able to get another year of training is actually pretty like important for me just because I had, I had only had five months before that of steady training. And now I've been able to just stack up weeks and weeks and weeks of steady training. So I've been trying to like look at this as an opportunity and just a time to really like enjoy running, enjoy training. And then I guess like kind of out of the blue, we had a, an opportunity to race come up this fall. So I actually will be doing a marathon this fall. That's the reason why I'm heading out to Flagstaff and um, yeah, we'll just, we'll see how it goes. It's been a very unconventional buildup. I'll have an, I had like, I had so much time to build up for the trials And now I have like literally eight weeks to build up for this marathon. So we'll see how it goes. It's going to be completely different, but who knows? It's, it's a quarantine marathon. (laughs) It's an adventure. Well, that's exciting to hear that there is a marathon that we can look forward to. (laughs) Um, I don't know if you can share any details about that yet, but nope. (laughs) Yeah. I actually don't know when we're allowed to like say I've been, I've been telling people that I know I figured this will probably come out after we've already announced, but yeah, you probably know which one it is. (laughs) There's one. (laughs) Yes. Well, that's really exciting. That's awesome. Um, So just to wrap up here, um, since most of our viewers um, are probably gearing up for their virtual Boston marathons, um, 
maybe if each one of you can just give a little bit of encouragement or advice or both to um, the people that are planning out their own Boston marathons, wherever they are, um, you know, any, any tidbits of marathon advice that you can offer them would be great. Maybe Sally, if you want to start. Um, I think the fact that 2020 has just been a difficult year for um, the whole world, really. I think it's uh, fantastic that people all over the world are going to join in and to be able to compete and to be able to participate. And even though it is a virtual marathon, I think it's still a fantastic thing that we get to join in in one thing and we get to celebrate um, that ability to be able to do that. And I think to get out there, just run for the fact that we are alive and we are here and, and, and still able to enjoy the thing that we do, which is run and or walk, um, you know. So I, I think um, just enjoy yourself. This year has been, this year has not been easy. So enjoy yourself for this opportunity that you got a, an opportunity to run and you've chosen to do that. Congratulations, go out there, enjoy yourself, have fun and, and you know, and join in, in, in all these, you know, join, join in, in the big family and, and have fun out there. Yeah. Set or uh, Molly, you want to? Yeah, I can go. Yeah. I think the, with these virtual marathons, it's obviously hard with it, not having the, the physical marathon, not like obviously the, the whole atmosphere of Boston is so huge. Um, and we miss out on a little bit of that with the virtual marathons, but then at the same time, just being able to, to still do this and be grateful, like to be healthy and to be able to run and to have this during, during a really difficult time. I think I've, uh, with the virtual races that I've done, being able to have that gratitude of like, man, like getting to go out and move my body and breathe and, and cover this distance, even though it's a little bit unconventional and it's a little bit different than what we would normally do. Like, yeah, just really having the gratitude for the sport that we have and knowing that there are thousands of other people doing it with you in solidarity. And yes, it'll be virtual this year, but hopefully next year it's not going to be and we're going to be right back at it. So yeah, being able to, to stay positive and know, yeah, this is just one more challenge we've got to overcome. And everybody who does marathons is pretty used to overcoming pretty big challenges. So go out with a good attitude and have fun and remember why you love doing it. That's it. Awesome. Like you said, everything. Um, you know, yeah, like to have the opportunity to be able to like get in a marathon is fantastic. Um, you know, like if you're motivated enough and you've signed up for a virtual marathon, just remember though that it's not probably gonna be the same as, you know, when you would tote the line in Boston Marathon. So you have to be able to adjust your expectations and not be too disappointed with the results. Um you know, 2020 has been really hard, so that should be just a celebration, you know, a way of celebrating being healthy and, you know, like your family being healthy and just, you know, run for the love of running, really, like, yeah, I, like, I'm glad that you get to race a marathon, you know, good luck to you, you know, have fun and, again, adjust your expectations, whatever happens, just remember that, like, Molly, just remember you're still the Olympian, you know, that was second place in February 29. So hopefully this one goes really well. But if it doesn't, such as 2020, you know, it's been turned upside down and we just have to roll and just go with the flow, honestly. Like, so I just, you know, hope everybody who is getting ready for Boston, wish them all the best. If they wake up one day, they don't feel like running, it's okay to like, you know, take that day off and it's okay to go to the race and you don't feel well, it's okay to finish, you know, slower than, you know, you are expecting, or if you are one of those people who has a really good day, and then, hey, that's even fantastic, because it makes you stronger, it makes you realize, you know, like, you have, um, I think having intrinsic uh, motivation is really great, and I think also that running virtually, I'm not sure if we will ever be able to use that, but I think some people, like, can practice something and be able to deliver it during, um, you know, the actual race. And so I feel like this is an opportunity for somebody to practice practice a race strategy that they've always wanted to do. But because you're running with other people, you kind of change your strategy. So this is a perfect time to practice that strategy, you know, and go have fun. That's all very good advice. Um, thank you. So I think that's it for today. But um, I just want to thank you all for for taking the time. And I know Sally. You get the award for, for uh, 
for the most effort calling in from Kenya. That's awesome. Um, oh, thank you. And I know I speak for for everyone when I say like we're really looking forward to seeing all three of you back out there again. But in the meantime, keep updating us and take care of yourselves and stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. All right.